Bang. Ma'am. Ma'am, நீங்க பேசுங்க ma'am, செக் பண்ணிக்கலாம் வால்யூம் செக் பண்ணிக்கலாம் ma'am. ஓகே சார். ஓகே சார். வால்யூம் நீங்க ஜூம் ஆ ஜூம்ல நீங்க பேசுங்க. அதுல ஆடியோ பிளே பண்ணி பாத்துக்கலாம் ma'am. சதீஷ் சார் செல்வி சார் ஒரு 5 मिनिट्स வெயிட் பண்ணுமே இன்னும் ஒரு கொஞ்சம் பேர் வருவாங்க ஓகே பவர் பேங்க் இல்ல பவர் பேங்க் அனனியா சொல்லி கொடுக்க முடியலா வாங்க மீட்டிங் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணுங்க டாக்டர் சதீஷ் குமார் திருமால் சார் Okay, 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 
I take immense pleasure to invite you all for the three days web, national webinar on research approach and nano material applications. I invite Mrs. Sami Amal, Assistant Professor Physics, to deliver the welcome address. Good afternoon to all. Honorable guests, respected chairman, secretary, principal, vice principal, faculties, faculties for other institutions, and my dear colleagues and my dear students. Warm good afternoon to all of you. It's our pleasure to invite the guest of honor, Dr. N. Jabina Behum, ma'am, DKM College for Women, Velur. We are grateful for the acceptance of our college invitation and for sharing your valuable time with us. This is second day webinar by our department. Before starting the program, let's call our respected principal, Dr. Monika Vasagi, ma'am, to speak a few words of encouragement. We have all given our best and we sincerely hope that you have a good time and enjoy webinar. Once again, warm and a hearty welcome to each and everyone gathered here for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I invite Dr. K. Sadish Kumar, HRE Physics, introducing our chief guest. Thank you, sir. Myself, Dr. K. Sadish Kumar, here in this glorious moment to extend my chief guest note for the second day <coughs> national webinar on research approach and nanomaterial applications. On behalf of my institution, I welcome our chief guest, Dr. Jabina Begum, MSc MPhil PhD, CA, PhD, Assistant Professor of Physics from DKM College for Women, Autonomous, Vellore. Her achievements include total teaching experience of our chief guest more than five years, a number of papers published in referred journal 19 with the high impact factor, and Google Scholar citation 644, Hutch Index 14, I-10 index 15, the conference proceedings with the ISBN 1, other than that she published more than two books, the number of papers presented in conference, seminar, symposium, international and national are cumulatively 42. Her academic responsibilities, she is, she is a coordinator of Rotary Club, Rotary Club, she is an organizing secretary for Science Cluster Research Program. She is a member of research committee, also a member of an extracurricular activity cell, UGC cell, and a development coordinator, a member of IQSC. Her honors and awards issued in nine. Uh, JR of Maulana Asas National Fellowship from University Grand Commission in 2013-14. Young Research Award from National Conference on Nanophotonics School of Physics, Bardasan University, Trichy in 2014. And Best Oral and Poster Presentation. The Best Scientist Award from Indian Academic Research Association, Trichy in 2020. And Editor of Rian Publication, Trichy. She has completed a project in anti-cancerous and anti-bacterial, anti-microbial activities of clusters from the funded agency of Subraga Med Labs, Chennai. It is an honor and a privilege for us, ma'am, to have you with us today. The schedule of the seminar will focus on the topic of chemical versus green synthesis of nanoparticle overview. overview. It will include more issues to address the full aspects of the topic. Thank you to everyone who made this webinar possible with their opinions and views. Thank you. Thank you, Sadi, sir. Now I invite our guest speaker, Dr. N. Jabina, uh, Jabina Behram, Assistant Professor, DKM College for Women, Vellore. So now hand over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, very happy morning to one and all. Uh, first of all, I wish to thank uh, the management and the principal of uh, Anne College of Arts and Science, Kumbagonam, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I wish to thank uh, uh, Dr. K. Satish Kumar, Associate Professor in the head, for inviting me 
me this uh, webinar three days webinar and uh, and i also wish to thank uh, everyone the organizing entire organizing team uh, for their uh, effort of con uh, conducting this uh, three days national webinar uh, thank you uh, so i'll present my screen sir yes ma'am okay. oh, okay. okay. Is it visible to you? Yes, it is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is you. Okay. Today, my topic of presentation is chemical versus green synthesis of nanoparticles and overview. Actually, in my presentation, um, okay. Uh, in my presentation, I'm going to cover uh, the three main parts. One is why we have to go for green synthesis, and second one is what are the advantages of this green synthesis over the chemical method. And uh, third one is we how to prepare the green synthesizer in nanoparticles. Actually, first is why we have to go for green synthesis. Before getting into the topic, all we are familiar with the nanomaterial. When we say the term nano, we know that this ten power minus nine meter dimensions dimension. So that the particle which is in the uh, range of ten power minus nine meter, it belongs to the nanomaterial, and. Uh, Due to the high surface area to volume ratio of this nanomaterial, that is due to this unique property, uh, this particular nanomaterial exhibits lot of unique characteristic when compared to the bulk counterpart, and so that we are using in a wide range of application. So that in our day-to-day -day life, we are using this nanoparticles in pharmaceutical applications, cosmetics, energy storage, and energy applications. Oil and gas petroleum to filter that is water filtration processing etc etc we can say that in simple words what we can say that we are living with that nanotechnology in daily basis yeah sure because uh, we are having very faster smaller and more powerful computers by means of this nanotechnology at the same time we are having this uh, medical diagnostic equipment and then we are having uh, implant coatings nanomaterial scope coating. And not only for diagnostic purpose, it can be used for therapeutic purpose also. For example, for can to cure the cancer cells in chemotherapeutic drugs, uh, this nanoparticle, uh, we are using this nanoparticles. And uh, nanofilters are the nanofibers in fabrics to design the fabrics uh, that is to increase the weight, thickness, otherwise stiffness of the fabric. At the same time, these uh, nanomaterials can also be used for water filters to filter, remove the nano-sized particles, etc., etc. When we, we go for, we can extend the application of this nanomaterial in various ways. There is no limit for that. Actually, we are living in daily basis with this nanomaterial. And uh, when we uh, talk about the cosmetics, we just see what are the uh, nanoparticles are present inside the cosmetics. What we are applying for face, other things, perfumes, etc., etc. You know, so that uh, like zinc oxide, mica, titanium, and the copper, platinum, alumina, a lot of nanoparticles are present in our uh, cosmetics and sunscreen lotions, etc. At the same time, uh, some of the nanoparticles are used in this, uh, what is the, the food packaging application is also to increase the shelf life of the particular material. And then, uh, you see, uh, uh, I already told that there will be a lot of uh, applications for this nanoparticle. There is positive aspects for this nanoparticles. We have to agree for that. But there will be one more thing. There is one more phase is for this nanoparticle. There is, uh, if we are working in office, how we have, how we are working, there is a, we will be very obedient, we will be very quiet, we will be very punctual, etc. etc. We can say that. But when we come to home, we are not like this. So that we have another phase. Similarly, these nanoparticles in one side have a lot of positive application, but when we talk about the another phase of this nanoparticle, 
there will be a toxicity uh, of this nanotoxic. So that only the term nanotoxicology, which is nothing but the study of toxicity of the nanomaterial, is gaining more attention of the scientific community. So that parallelly, how the nanotechnology is growing, you know, so that similarly the another uh, study is also growing. What is this nanotoxicology? The study of the toxicity of the nanomaterial. So that. Uh, because of the highly increased surface area to volume ratio, that is because of the quantum size effect, uh, there will be a large difference in the properties of this um, nanomaterial as well as, well as bulk material. So that we are having a new property that is called toxicity. So that what happened if we are continuously using these type of materials, that is these type of nanoparticles mean, it will, that is the inhalation, otherwise exposure of these nanoparticles leads to the inflammation, fibrosis, some allergic reactions in our skin. Sometimes it may lead to uh, severe diseases called uh, cancer. And then uh, you can see uh, the nanoparticle also, it is in the food like uh, coloring and pickering agent. That is, we are having we are having some gums, mints, candies, frost sticks, pop tarts, uh, coffee creamers, birding. There is a colorful chocolate foods like we are having. So, that for this uh, uh, material, uh, the, the um, industries are using the nanoparticles as a thickening and coloring. So, that we have to know that little bit science behind this uh, nanotech nanotechnology, how these particles may affect our human beings' health. So that one, once it enters in, into the body, what happens, we have to think of. So that to understand this, the Parnell University, uh, that is New York, undergone an animal study. From this study, the scientists discovered that after eating these nanoparticles continuously, the chicken may experience a change in the uh, intestinal uh, walls. So that what happened, just think about that, what happened if we are continuously taking these type of nanoparticles. And then, uh, then when we uh, go for the carcinogenic and nanotechnology, it is uh, used in a, a lot of uh, like uh, perfumes, uh, mascara, and hydrogen face mask, sunblock cream, UV block cream, hair production, etc., etc. We can say that without that, uh, some of the ladies uh, are not uh, coming out from the home. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, that is all are attending. Some nearly eighty-five uh, members are attending the webinar. You know, so that is why. Uh, Say to kindly unmute your video. Uh, somebody hesitate to unmute your video because uh, uh, they are uh, not in makeup. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just uh, set for joking. Uh, so that uh, uh, everybody, everybody wants to use this type of uh, material that is cosmetic, and uh, we have to think about the toxicity of this cosmetic also. Then you, uh, that is, uh, if you just think about is makeup is good or bad for us. That everybody say that is it uh, good only now? What is the doubt? What is the doubt for you? Uh, really, if we apply some makeup things, uh, we will be very beauty and we can take a selfie uh, very nice manner. So that uh, everybody can say that it will be very good. So you just see, uh, okay, you just see with and without makeup how the actors will be. So with the makeup only, they will be very bright. So that I also agree, it will be good only. But we have to think about in future what will be the risk for them. And the very sad thing is, by knowing or unknowingly, the parents are intentionally using the makeup things for the children. There are so many medical reasons why makeup is not good for other young ones. We have to think that whether their child's skin is very, very thinner. And that uh, children's skin is less able to defend itself against the uh, irritants. So that the prolonged use of these makeup things with the chemical that is cosmetic, it can produce the adverse effect. The barrier and the structure of the skin causes it to be more sensitive to other things uh, like uh, even water, soap, sweat, heat. So that it is very sensitive to these things. Also. And uh, one more thing is, if you are using the makeup, okay, that is occasionally I am using. Uh, that is the student, otherwise the kid is going for some school function, otherwise some party, some marriage function, we are using that, okay, I will agree. But we have to remove the uh, makeup thing, the chemical, clearly, properly. So the incomplete removal of this product may also produce the unhygienic practices. It can clog the pores. At the same time, it can uh, enhance to transmit the bacteria through this pores. And then uh, nanoparticles in personal care products, that is, there are a lot of 
beta resistance to the effects of this antibiotic so that it may create the another type where the weak bacteria is called as the superbugs. Otherwise, the name is multi drug resistance bacteria. Actually, the same bacteria it will be very resistant to the antibiotic. Next time, whenever you go for the treatment, that is for cold, the device cough, if the doctor uh, gives the same antibiotic uh, to this particular case, it does not work. Because in his body, there will be a super bug server. So that it will resist that antibiotic. So that he has to give the uh, antibiotic which is resistant to the multi drug resistant bacteria, otherwise, super bug. So that it's a very important thing we have to use these antibiotics. So that you just think of uh, this uh, in the US, over 2 million of people from an antibiotic resistant infection annually. And then you from the image, you can see the, the ordinary bacteria when it becomes the super bug, otherwise, multi drug resistant bacteria. Afterward, if you are giving the normal antibiotic, otherwise, injection or anything, whatever you are already given, it does not work. It will be very safe in the upper lung like this. So that we have to give the different antibiotic which is resistant to the superbug, otherwise multi drug resistant bacteria. There's a basic uh, uh, bacteria, E. coli, that is Associa coli and Clepsilla pneumonia. It is not a, a new one. We are uh, living with this bacteria. Actually, it, uh, these two bacteria only uh, infect our uh, body uh, to create the cough, cold, etc. Uh, so that uh, it will become a superbug we don't, uh, we can't use the normal antibiotic, we have to go for the antibiotic resistance material. So what will, that is, if it is created the super bug, it will create the urinary tract infection, ventilator associated pneumonia bloodstream infection and intra abdominal infection also. Uh, so that, uh, now what we are going to say now, uh, in first of you said that there will be a lot of positive aspects of the there will be a lot of costly application for the nanoparticle. In second aspect, when we talk about the cosmetic and the medical field, if you are using the antibiotic, what's happening? So that uh, what about the toxicity of the nanoparticles? Whether it is a good for our health or not, we can ask. The answer is everything in excess is opposed to nature only. That is allowed in general, so that everything in excess is opposed to nature only. So that uh, if we are taking a very small amount of this nanoparticle, it will be better for our health. But if we are continuously taking this nanoparticle, it will create a large amount of uh, risk problem in future. So that in future, uh, the manufacturer can uh, proudly say that our product is made without this nanoparticle. So that you can uh, you can uh, buy this uh, buy our product. Uh, that is, if they avoid these uh, type of ingredients. In so that uh, some of the association uh, organizations are there. There is Economic Cooperation and Development in France and then WHO, World Health Organization, everybody you know. They are actually every year, they are uh, producing the guidelines how uh, the nanoparticles have to be produced at the same time how the nanoparticles have to be printed into the environment. They are producing the guidelines. If we are the factories, the industries which, the, which are following these type of guidelines only, they can bring the uh, product into the environment. Otherwise, own. So that uh, the main thing is that uh, if we are producing the nanoparticle in lab, okay, there is no problem. But when we are bringing the nanoparticle into the environment, we have to think about this toxicity of the nanoparticle. So that, uh, what are the ways to reduce the toxicity of nanoparticles? And there are lots of ways out there. I'm not saying that only this uh, particular way only we can reduce the toxicity of the nanoparticles. A lot of, lot of uh, um, methodology is there to reduce the toxicity of the nanoparticles. That is providing a biocompatible organic coating is often used to reduce the toxicity of the nanoparticles. At the same time, somebody are saying that if you are giving the polymer coating on this uh, nanoparticle, we can reduce the toxicity and then somebody are saying that the particular dimension, the particular size is too toxic. So that which size, which dimension, which shape is not toxic, you just create, you just introduce these type of nanoparticles. Why you are going for another type, another shape, other uh, type of dimension you are going for. So that which shape is very, very less toxic, you just prepare it and use it, somebody are saying. But the one of the way is nothing but using this green synthesis, using this biological synthesis, we can reduce the toxicity of the nanoparticles. Uh, so that 
uh, everyone hope uh, that is i hope uh, everybody can understand why we have to go for green sanctions my first thought is over so that actually there will be a lot of positive aspects of this nanoparticle similarly uh, on another hand there will be a negative aspect of nanoparticle is also the so that to uh, bring a balance between these two we can reduce the otherwise if we are on to reduce the toxicity of the nanoparticle we can go for green sanctions and the next part of my uh, presentation is what are the advantages of this grain synthesis over the chemical method grain synthesis is nothing but we uh, we can biological synthesis or the grain synthesis is nothing but we can produce we can synthesize the nanoparticle by means of the plant and the microorganism that is uh, plant uh, that is a uh, medicinal plant otherwise uh, we have herbal plants and so So then, what are the advantage? If we are using the chemical method, since it will be simple, inexpensive, and low temperature synthesis method, as the main thing is here, we have to use some toxic reducing agent and stabilizing agent like NaOH, ammonium hydroxide, and then uh, sodium hydroxide, some solution, ethanol, methanol. We have to use that to produce the nanoparticle uh, in the chemical method. But If we are going for biological method, otherwise green method, it is very easy, efficient, and the main thing is it is eco-friendly in nature. And the main advantages over this uh, chemical method is nothing but it eliminates the use of toxic chemicals, consume very very lesser energy, and produce safer products and also better products. Also. And you just see from the image, you can able to understand the. Uh, you just. able to see the uh, green synthesis having lot of uh, advantages compared to green that is chemical method is very cost effective eco friendly synthesis faster synthesis compared to physical method as well as chemical method bio compatible it does not require a higher temperature to produce the synthesis the nanoparticle at the same time does not require energy like uh, if we are uh, using how much of there is a how the power power it does not require any power to produce the Uh, synthesized nanoparticles at the same time does not require high pressure, and this synthesis does not require hazardous chemicals. So there are all the advantages of this green synthesis over the chemical. And uh, the next press, the next topic is how to prepare this green synthesis nanoparticles. You said that it is the green synthesis is better to reduce the toxicity of nanoparticles, and what are the advantages we discussed? And third part is how to prepare the green synthesized nanoparticles. That nanoparticles, uh, when we are saying the biological synthesis, we can synthesize these nanoparticles from enzymes, microorganisms, and waste products. And purely plant-based system, that is green synthesis, we can use from the, uh, we can uh, synthesize the nanoparticles from plant cells. And uh, here you see this microorganism has been shown to be important nano factories that hold immense potential as eco-friendly and cost-effective tools. It also avoids the toxic, harsh chemicals, and it does not require high energy demand. It is which are required in the physical or in chemical sense. Uh, when we go for this type of waste material, there is uh, the peel of the orange, orange peel, uh, you know, so that from we can synthesize the uh, nanoparticle, silver nanoparticle, from peel extract of this orange and the milk waste at the same time since it will be used as lemon juice. So the we can use different size and different shape of the uh, nanoparticles. You see that is nanoparticles like uh, iron, silver, gold nanoparticles. We can synthesize. And uh, purely, if you are talking about the uh, plants, so that recently there will be uh, another like nanotechnology, toxicology, toxicology. The almost field is growing up, which is called phyto nanotechnology. What is phyto nanotechnology? Is nothing but phyto. It's a uh, uh, it's Derived from the plants, so that phytochemicals is nothing but the chemical constituents of the plants. So that it will provide a new avenue for the synthesis of nanoparticles, and this is under an eco-friendly, very simple, and uh, very fast and stable and cost-effective method to produce nanoparticles. So that the current nanotechnology has more advantages, including biocompatibility, scalability, and medical applicability. We can. But the main thing is here we do we can't use we no no we no need to use toxic chemicals here the universal solvent which is water can be act like a reducing medium. Uh, and then uh, when I am saying that uh, we are producing the nanoparticle from plant, the plant it's not a simply plant actually we can produce the nanoparticle from flowers of the plant fruit stem. Leaf, node, anti-node, buds, root, whatever you take, we can prepare the nanoparticles from every parts of the plant using 
it is the uh, part of the plan, we can see this in And uh, it has been proposed that a lot of phytochemicals are present inside the plants, like proteins, amino acids, carbonic acid, vitamins, and some flavonoids, alkaloids, polyphenols, etc. I said, these are all acting like a reducing agent, otherwise, capping agent, otherwise, stabilizing agent to criticize the nanoparticles. But we can't say that exactly the proteins, otherwise, exactly the amino acids, exactly the flavonoids, otherwise, exactly the polyphenols is the uh, what is it uh, responsible for the synthesis of the nanoparticles? It will be acting like a capping agent, it will be acting as a stabilizing agent. Uh, that is a phytochemical, so it may be anything uh, which are present inside the plant, you know, so that it can be used to, uh, otherwise, it can be act like a capping agent uh, to produce the synthesis. And one more thing is that there will be a lot of reports such as that. Uh, if we are going for one plant to another, that is, if we are, I'm going to filter the silver nanoparticle from a plant A, it will produce a particular mechanism. At the same time, if I'm going for second plant, plant B, it will produce a different mechanism uh, of what is the synthesizing nanoparticle. So that, uh, uh, what is the synthesis mechanism? It's very, very, very simple. For the synthesis of nanoparticles, uh, you just see from this figure, you can understand the we have to take the fresh leaves of the plant and cut into fine cut leaves and then we mix it with water with some proportion and heating a hot plate we will get some uh, green solution green solution is like a extract of the plant it's a particular leaf if you are taking the leaf it's a leaf extract you are taking the root it's a root extract whatever you are taking it is actually it looks like a, a capsaicin so that if you just take uh, and boil it, you will just filter it, you will get the aqueous leaf extract solution. And then with this leaf extract solution, you just add the metal salt solution what you have to prepare. For example, if you are going to prepare gold nanoparticle, you just take uh, gold chloride, otherwise silver, if you are take uh, silver nitrate, so that you just take the particular salt solution in another beaker. And you just uh, mix with these two, one is leaf extract solution and one is metal star solution in a particular proportion, you will get a bioreduction of metal ions and finally you will get the formation of nanoparticles. Then it is ready to take the further characterization. And then you see this, it's a cost effective approach. Why I'm saying this cost effective approach, you are going to take the fresh leaves of plant to be free of cost. And then you just see what are the apparatus you need to prepare this particle, only the beaker and the hot plate, etc. One filter, filter paper, and you can see this uh, one more thing is uh, uh, for the funnel, that's all. Uh, it, uh, it almost costs uh, nearly from 3,000 to 5,000 approximately because hot plate only we have to, uh, it will be 3,000 to 5,000. The beaker, two beaker is enough, and one funnel is enough, and then some filter paper is enough. So that by only within the uh, four to five thousand, you can prepare a uh, lot of uh, uh, nanoparticles uh, which are wandering, which are producing uh, wonder in all the fields like medical field, the science and technology. And uh, already, a lot of literature is there. Uh, there are different types of plants are uh, using different uh, researchers. There is a, uh, for example, you just see. Panic ginseng, red ginseng, and uh, Nigella sativa. They are using different parts, this leaf, alpha, root. They are using and their different types of nanoparticles also. They are producing copper, silver, gold. And then you just see the shapes uh, spherical shape, octahedral shape, triangular shape, etc. And the size is also different. And they are using for different applications, the electrocatalytic application and mosquitocidal and then antibacterial catalytic application, etc. etc. And uh, you can see that ma'am, you just uh, you are showing different plants name, but I can't understand it will be I think uh, it will not be available in Tamil Nadu and then it will not be available in India, not like this. Actually these are all the names of scientific names of the medicinal plants. Actually we are living with the medicinal plants in day to day life. Uh, for example, you just say Calotropis gigantea. You just see, you know this. Uh, anyone could you say this? What is that plant? Anyone could you say this? What is that plant? Calotropis gigantea from the figure. Actually, it is Ericum chedi. 
everyone know i think and then this one we are familiar with the racemum tenuricin tulasi tulasi tree actually and then anonas cumosa it's also nothing but the cheeta plum that is a uh, ella so one is that because we are familiar with that we are living with this uh, material uh, plants in daily basis so that we can do uh, research in these type of uh, plants and uh, in addition the time required for the green synthesizing nanoparticles from plants is very very shorter uh, than that of our physical as well as chemical method so there many researchers have achieved the synthesis of the nanoparticles it may be silver or anything Uh, within two minutes, five minutes, forty-five minutes, one hour, two hour, etc. But if we are going for physical method, we have to uh, take that particular material, the electron, or the other thing. It depends upon the methodology. Methodology instruments we are using. It will take uh, two to three hours, two to five hours. Sometimes uh, it take uh, one day. The uh, difference is in the physical or chemical method. Uh, but uh, when we are going for the green synthesis. Just when you are adding the plant extract solution with the salt solution, within the second two minutes, within the two minutes or five minutes, we will able to see the color change of the solution, which will indicate the formation of the particular particle, silver nanoparticle or gold nanoparticle or silver nanoparticle. What we are taking. At the same time, it will produce the uh, uh, particular narrow size distribution also, good mo uh, mono viscosity. That is, uh, it can be achieved by means of changing certain critical parameters while synthesizing. What are the main critical parameters? Nothing but pH of the solution. Uh, by controlling the pH of the solution, we can synthesize the different shape, different size of the nanoparticles. Actually, for instance, an alumina sativa extract has a pH three and four. Numerous small sizes of nanoparticles are formed, whereas at pH two, nanoparticles aggregation. So by changing the pH value, one can tune the size and shape of the nanoparticles. And then uh, the main thing we have to understand that I as uh, I already told that when I am using the plant A, it will produce certain type of nanoparticles, and when I go for the plant B, it will produce certain type of the nanoparticles. Okay, but the important thing is to be highlighted here is nothing but. Uh, I am going to use a single plant, the same plant, the A plant, but I am going to use the different parts of the plant. For example, the same A plant. First time I am producing the nanoparticle, the means of the leaf, it will uh, produce some type of uh, nanoparticle. And when I am going for the same A plant, but I am not going to take the leaf this time, I am going to take the root of the plant, it will produce certain type of certain size nanoparticle. So that. Uh, the synthesis mechanism is unique for different plants, and also it's unique for different parts of the same kind of plants. And uh, as I already told that one can tune the property of this uh, size of this uh, nanoparticles by changing the pH value. Similarly, the duration time, salt concentration, etc. Uh, by changing these type of uh, parameters, also we can tune the property of this. We can tune the size and shape of the uh, synthesizing nanoparticles. So that now, now these type of green synthesized nanoparticles can be safer to use in the cosmetic and medicinal application, and it can be used as a focal imaging because we are taking, we are intaking these type of nanomaterials. So that on the other you see, uh, it can be used to treat certain types of uh, cancer diseases, brain cancer, skin skin cancer, breast cancer, and then uh, we can use it for uh, cell labeling, gene labeling, etc. Et so that. When we have, we are going to use a, a nanoparticle for medical application. It is better to synthesize uh, in the brain technology, brain nanotechnology. And uh, by comparing the property of this uh, uh, chemically synthesized and green synthesized nanoparticles, uh, a one research group from Department of Nanotechnology, Ranji University, Iran, compared these two different properties of green nanoparticles uh, using the uh, leaf extract. That is, that means we are Uh, leaf extract, and then another one is simply the chemical method. So that uh, they first uh, take take the study that antimicrobial effect of the green nanoparticles against two different bacterial strains. One is the Scapoli, another one is Pseudomonas aurantima resistant strain. So that this study was shown that green synthesized nanoparticles have many advantages over the chemical method, and finally they uh, exhibit the result that antimicrobial activity is just Method and this is synthesized using green method. Here you can be able to see lot of bacteria growth is there, but here you just see this 
there will be some inhibition of uh, bacterial growth so it is somewhat clear so that the bacteria are killed here and then here is the another freedom known as outer tumor here also continuous uh, bacterial growth is there but here it is somewhat clear so that green method is uh, much more than better than the chemical method. and uh, we have to think about the cytotoxicity also cytotoxicity is nothing but uh, how much it is uh, toxic to the healthy cell healthy human cell actually when we are taking these type of nanoparticles as antibiotic we are intaking this antibiotic which should destroy to kill only the bacteria which are harmful to our body but it should uh, not affect our healthy cells so that we have to take the type of cytotoxic cells and then here you see this there is a green matter this is a chemical matter in chemical matter there will be a more number of cells are died cell viability is very very low but the green matter we are having a good cell viability percentage uh, so that only in our lab we have synthesized using the ag dopus enoxy nanoparticles using anona sumosa leaf extract and uh, we have studied these type of uh, um, nanoparticles against the multi drug resistant bacteria as i already mentioned you know there is normal antibiotic it does not work in a certain condition if the bacteria strain is good is super bad otherwise multi drug resistant bacteria we have to go for another type of uh, antibiotic which is resistance to the antibiotic uh, or the very standard antibiotic Uh, you just see, uh, we have synthesized the nanoparticles using this green technology, and uh, this is the control. And this S1 and the S2 is nothing but this is a standard antibiotic what we are using in our laboratory. And uh, this is the nanoparticle using that side. There is a silver dose using that side nanoparticle in our laboratory synthesized these nanoparticles, and you can able to see here it will destroy, it will inhibit the large amount of bacteria. It will create the uh, this. And then uh, we we tested against the different uh, multi drug resistant bacteria, viral bacteria, and then uh, pain pneumonia, the plexilla pneumonia, and the enterococcus. So that uh, you can able to see compared to S1 standard anti antibiotic one and two, it is producing the clear inhibition zone. Uh, you can ask me why there is lack of nanoparticle is there, there is silver nanoparticle is there, mineral nanoparticle. Uh, titanium is there, silicon dioxide is there. Why you are taking the green oil? Green oil is a very, very essential for our uh, human body. Actually, you know that uh, some if you are not uh, feel healthy, otherwise tired, some zinc tablets they will give to improve our health. And then zinc is essential for our human being. And then uh, so that we have uh, the, we are doing research or research in this green oil side. And then you just see this article: the green oil is in nanoparticles.
example, uh, ma'am, uh, I don't know about the plants which are producing the medicinal property, which are having the herbal, the herbal based uh, plant. I don't know. You just go to our grandmother and you just ask it to her, and she will help you. Actually, uh, actually, without knowing the basic, actually, uh, we are doing research in them and we are. Uh, Having the PhD degree by means of this great synthesis of nanoparticles, you know, but without knowing the basic concept, without being they are knowing the basis of the nanotechnology, they did a lot of research work in the uh, nanotechnology, and also uh, we have to give the PhD degree to our grandmother. Uh, actually, if, if we are going for headache, otherwise if we are going for any uh, stomach upset, anything, they are uh, they can easily pick up some plant leaf, otherwise some some type of extract and then, and then and suddenly uh, they will uh, get a particular disease with you. Uh, so that uh, I just asked it to our uh, grandmother or his grandfather, they will know uh, the uh, basis of this medicinal plant. So that we have to synthesize the uh, nanoparticles which reduce the toxicity better we can do for green synthesis. Uh, that's all. Uh, then thank you one and all. If you are having any doubts, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, ma'am. Doctor Sadish. Yes. This is that. Yeah. What is person asking question? Hey, participants, any questions, please post in chat box. Participants, any queries? Please post in chat box. If you have any clarity, you just ask me. I'm happy to uh, answer you. The studies that said uh, there will be a lot of students. There is no questions. All are giving uh, valuable feedbacks. Very nice, very grateful. Thanks to everyone for some the session. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, Satish sir uh, said that uh, there are a lot of participants, mainly from PG students. And uh, just is doing some more slides to you. Uh, actually, I'm not going to say the entire opportunity uh, in the future. There is there will be some research institute are there in other like CERN -E and the NA. SA, the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, and LA Zero. Some um, institutions are there. They are uh, providing summer internship program. You just go for Google and search it. You will get a lot of information for that. You just do this type of internship program. And uh, you are saying that we can't able to go for abroad. So that the, um, within India, the Indian Academy of Science and Science, uh, uh, they are uh, organizing such a summer internship program. And uh, within Tamil Nadu, in IGK, some state university like Madras University, they are uh, providing the opportunity to do summer internship programs. So that you just uh, apply for that and uh, do some uh, like programs. And uh, there are lots of scholarships also there, like Inspire Scholarship, a scholarship for higher education. You can do your PhD uh, by means of this Inspire Scholarship, the five years uh, fellowship. And Indra Gandhi scholarship for single girl side. If you are a first single girl side going to do a master degree in your home, you can apply it for. And the DSC Women Scientist team is also there. And some annual scholarship is for the Rajiv Gandhi scholarship. And the EGC uh, Maulana Azad Nation fellowship is there. You just uh, apply for this. I'm not uh, uh, saying that only these scholarships, these internship program is available. This is a key for you. You just Google it. You can be able to know what are the fellowships, what are the scholarships, and what are some internship program we can do. You can search it and uh, make it like this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, ma'am. Now invite Mr. Jay Kumar, Assistant Professor, PG Department of Physics, propose a word of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone, to the one and all present here. Uh, our most respected chairman of Hanai Group of Institution, most respected principal, respected Dr. S. K. Sadish Kumar Hachodi of Physics, and all the participants. It is such an honor me to get the opportunity to thank you all dignitaries. On behalf of the physics department of Anai College of Arts and Science, I extend a warm welcome to the people in the gathering. I would like to extend my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their present. I extend my gratitude to the honorable Chief Guest Dr. Javina Beckham, ma'am, to take out time from his busy schedule to the to grace the event. I extend my sincere thank to our chairman and a group of institution. I extend my sincere thanks to our principal, Anai College of Arts and Science, and also vice principal, Professor Sterian Sir and Raja Sir, to give the opportunity. For the webinar, I extend my gratitude to all the participants and the professors, research scholars, and various uh, college uh, students to take part in the webinar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you.